Hello and welcome to another Cinema 4D tutorial here on NoiseJunkies.net. In this tutorial, we'll take a look at Hair in Cinema 4D R11.5 and also the new awesome render. Just if you take an early look at the picture view for the preview in Render Make Preview, it used to be just a QuickTime little movie, we just open QuickTime. But now in this version, they open a picture view where you can see your folder and where you can fast forward and look at each frame. And there are all sorts of things like the filter where you can apply saturation, exposure, and you know, that is really cool. So that's what we're gonna be creating in this tutorial. Just a hair animation changing color over time. So I'll go to File, New, and create a new project. And now I'll create a sphere. Hair can only exist to shape an object. So we'll add hair to the scene. We don't even need to drag or anything. But when we render, you'll see it has the format of a sphere. So we can do that for any object like platonic, for example. It will do the thing. It will do the same thing. Now, if we apply hair alone, it's invisible, so it needs to be with an object. So I'll create a sphere in this case and apply here. Now, before we start coming in the hair material and create the colors and all that stuff, I want to unsee the sphere by clicking twice on these two dots and making them red. So now I can see the red, I can see the hair, it's shaping the sphere, but I can't see the sphere itself, which is okay. So now on the hair options, I want to go on dynamics, let's see, on guides, and then set the length to, I don't know, 290 for example. So now the hair is much, much bigger. And if you click, click play, you'll see there's an automatic animation where the hair all falls down and creates a cool thing. Because the hair options already come with generate, dynamics, forces. And here gravity set to negative 9.81, but we can set this to negative 2, for example. And it's gonna be much, much slower. Or we can set this to 3, and it's gonna go up instead. Some sort of attraction. And if we set it to 0, of course, nothing's gonna happen. So 1 or 2 is probably a good one because it's moving really slow and exponential. So, we'll set it to 2. On the dynamics, you can also change the mass a little bit. It probably has some impact on the gravity. Going a little bit quicker, as you can see. So yeah, that's in terms of the, the physics part, right? So now, we can probably go to Animation, Auto Key, double click on the hair material. And let's begin with a blue this and purple on the other side so that's our initial material for the hair set a keyframe and then we'll go to frame 90 and just slide this over to green really cool very interesting so because of the auto key, it should be an automatic animation, but I don't know. So a problem with the colors is that we we'll probably have to do it manually, which kind of sucks. But we we'll just see add keyframe in here, and in here we'll do add a keyframe. So yeah, now it's working, it's gradually becoming the color we want. Cool. So now you can just create your camera. You can also add the light depending. Light here is going to have a color correction issue. It's going to make brighter or darker if you set it here. I'm not going to play any light in this particular scene. So in the cameras now, let's just try to, to orbit a little bit. So being frame zero, that's your starting point. And then frame 30, 
let's rotate it, replace, and then last but not least, move it and come. And now it's really close. Now, if you don't like that, and I don't, you can just get the Z axis and push it back a little bit here. That's much better. So that's a basic scene with hair. And now let's take a look at the render. I'll go to render settings and it's different from my previous one in R10. General, we want the full render uh, rather than a software preview of lower quality. And then in the output, you set the width and height. You can do that manually in pixel centimeters and inches are all the options. Or come to a preset screen and see the resolution. Let's say 800 by 600. So resolution, you can also change it for a really high resolution like 300 or the standard which is 72. And then in save, you can choose your saving path. I'll just do whatever here. Renders here. In the format of your layers. PNG, a sequence of JPEG, MOV. So now we'll go back to output and in the frame range you can also set all frames or current frame. I would love to set all frames but I don't have that time for our animation. So I'll say current frame to show you the, the render engine. So we'll go to render to picture viewer. Let's we'll see it render the current frame. Now I didn't really like that particular frame. Let's go one of the but maybe the last, maybe the last one. It's a little cooler. So let's go to picture viewer. And here we have our render. So now I'll go to enable filter and we can play with all those things that we'll probably have to bring to Photoshop before. I'll set this to 100 so we have full format and scale this up a little bit. So, saturation, maybe zero or maybe very saturated. Brightness as well, it's very straightforward. The contrast, we have a black scene in the background. So, exposure, of course, our element. How is our element going to be bright? And then gamma, which is the overall brightness and contrast of our project, which I'm going to set a little bit low in this case. And then you can enable the red and green blue to render each layer, for example, if you want. There's not a lot of red in here, but you can make it by clicking on here, for example. So it's kind of like setting a quick material in here. And then you can reset the filter for a standard or create post effect to re-render with the effects and then here again it's like Photoshop where you have the layers you can shut them off but that only happens if you have a lot of layers together you have to render them separately here's the other one we had before we can always work work on them later you know that's awesome in, ter in terms of this new render they have this library yeah very cool so yeah, those are some of the cool features of R11.5 in terms of hair and rendering picture viewer. I hope you guys have enjoyed this quick tutorial and I hope to see you next time on noisejunkies.net. Thanks for watching.